pattern instruction yes. for a student. Um, you demonstrated um, looking at the student and breathing. Right, and then pointing to somebody else. Yeah. Why do you do that? Well, because if I point to her and ask her to sing, she chokes up and will sing for me. But if I say, um, bum, and surprise him, he'll sing without choking up and thinking. So I can get children to sing for me right away because they don't know they've done it. But if I say, um, bum, I get nothing from you. How do you make sure they're breathing, though? Excuse me? How do you make sure that they're breathing? I they're watch. Bum, bum. I want their mouths open and bum, bum. I watch their chest and I watch their mouth. If they say bomb bomb, I'll say no, no, that's not right. I'm doing bomb bomb. Would you do that for me? And I watch and I listen. But children do, not, by and large, it takes me quite a while to get them to breathe. Bomb 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 bomb. Sometimes they take a very long breath, and notice I use it with my body, um, bum, until they get the message. There was a question over here. We were talking about um, when, you know, when you're teaching a song, and like you just did, it looked yeah. was awesome, because you talked about so many different things about it, but is that's post-wrote song procedure, to, right, because... Well, to me, that is wrote song procedure. Okay. It's not post that is wrote song procedure. See, I would not try to teach a song with yum ba da ba da da sing. Ya ba da ba da da bum ba da ba da bum ba I don't do it that way. That that to me is teaching a road song traditional I mean, style. I mean your um the the road song procedure where you know you sing it and then you um demonstrate the macro beat and how the students right. demonstrate and that the whole procedure. Oh yeah, that all comes first. Right, okay. Yeah, that's road procedure, but not road <coughs> song procedure. That's road procedure. Oh, okay. In other words, that's not teaching a song, it's just teaching them to feel macro beats and micros. Okay. okay, I saw another hand somewhere. No? Okay, then I'm going to go to instrumental music. Okay? Instrumental. You're all coming, waiting for instrumental. <laughs> okay. Look, in instrumental music, I think now I'm almost in my 25th year of doing research in instrumental music. <clears throat> and the more I do it, the more convinced I come to what's what's good approach and what's good procedure. And so I want to start out, and before I start teaching you how to do it, I want to tell, tell you a relevant story. And I think that'll help me move in to what I want to teach you. When I was at the University of Iowa, and this goes back to the 1960s, late 50s, 60s, I got a grant and I was validating one of my music aptitude tests. And the way you validate a music aptitude test is to give the test to students, then give them instruction for a period of years. And then come back after you've given them instruction and try to find out, do the students who got the high scores before they had instruction, are they actually the ones who make a lot of progress? And if the ones who got low scores make less progress, we tend to validate the aptitude test. We call it longitudinal predictive validity. See, because none of us really know what aptitude is, we have to look at it in a pragmatic way. If I gave them the aptitude test to persons who can already perform, I never know whether the aptitude force caused the performance or the performance caused the aptitude score. So I have to give it before they have any instruction, wait two or three years, and then test them for achievement. So I went to Des Moines, Iowa. I had 250 instruments that were given to me in a grant. And I wanted to give this thing, gave the aptitude tests to 250 students. And I was, came back every year for three years testing achievement to see what the correlation was between initial scores and ultimate achievement. On the musical aptitude profile, it has 250 questions. And one in 10,000 students gets a perfect score. Well, believe it or not, in Des Moines, 
there was a child who got a perfect score. And of course, I was delighted because that's going to help me validate my test if, in fact, it is valid. Because here I've got the student who scores high. He should blow the top off all achievement and just do wonderful things for me. So I went back to Iowa City in a very good mood, thinking this is great. He wanted an alto saxophone. He got it. I went back to Des Moines about two weeks later just to make sure all was going well. And I forget the child's name, but he's not taking any lessons. He's not in the group. So I said to the teacher, what happened to Joe? Well, he's a problem, and we don't get along, and he dropped. And I said, this is awful, you know. Well, he, I don't want him in the class. He disrupts the class. So I went to the principal and said, what happened? He said, I don't know. Why don't you go check with the parents? Called the parents. They invited me for dinner. And I go over, and the conversation goes like this. And this is the part of my story that's important. Joe, what's the trouble? I don't know. I don't know anything about music. I'm not very good. And the father said, Joe, we answer the professor's questions. This is Joe's response. He said, well, you know, like, you know, we're playing. And she says, this is G. And he starts fingering G. He says, she says, this is G. Okay, that's G. But then later on, she calls it G. But it isn't G. What the child was telling me, they played a tune in G in the key of G major. And then later, she was teaching him a song in C. Well, he heard it as Do in G major, and he heard it as So in C. And he's saying, but it isn't G. And she said, I told you, it's G. And he kept saying, but it isn't. And she said, get out of here. I tried to explain to the teacher what the problem was, that she's teaching a fixed system. That teaching letter names to learn to play an instrument is kind of this side of stupidity. In other words, don't do it. Well, of course, it was like banging my head against a wall because she was taught E, G, B, D, F, and this is G, damn it, it's going to be G forever.